This week on the Avalon Hideaway with Abstract Artemis, we have calling from Mobile, Alabama, Mr. John David Anthony, famous Hello, of uh, everybody, <laughs> uh, famous from Wet Willie. If you know this legendary band from Mobile, Alabama, thank you for being here, John. Oh, you're welcome, Art. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. Thanks for uh, taking time out of your schedule. I know you're playing a lot, and uh, that's great. I'm I'm happy about that. I, I, you said you were playing downtown just now. Yeah, my wife is happy, and my children are happy about it because I'm, that means I'm bringing money in the table. You know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We're. Uh, I play down at a hotel, actually a five star hotel downtown uh, in Mobile at the Battle House. And then, uh, and I'm also playing some spot jobs with uh, this friend of mine, Jeff Krigler, who's a really good singer. In fact, I, this is the guy that I sent you that, the... Uh, distraction. The, yeah, Distraction. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, excellent. Yeah, he's a great vocalist, man. That, that's a great song, too. That's a, and he, uh, and uh, I like that. I was, I was impressed when you sent me that. Very, great production and great everything. Yeah, um, well, after so long, you'd think you'd learn how to do something. <laughs> <laughs> we can hope right you know yeah um i i you you know i actually saw you play at the battle house years ago and i remember you played some some songs that i didn't quite expect you to play uh and i thought it was pretty cool and i was wondering if you still play like what are you playing now because i remember you, you were playing like some rob zombie and and like yeah. maybe some limp yeah. biscuit <laughs> yeah yeah, well, what I do is really, it's kind of cool because I like that music. I mean, I've always, I've always teetered on being the edge of a metalhead and, a, you know, a funk guy like Wet Willie. So it's like, I've been in that, that head all this time. And so, and, and when I was coming up, I took violin. So I have a lot of orchestra background, you know, so that has enabled me to like, I'll take these songs like Metallica. People come, hey man, you know Metallica? And I'm going, dude, look at me. You know, do I look like I, but I got tired of that. So I just said, you know what? I'll play, you know, REM or, or anything like Metallica, but I'll just do it on piano. I'll make, I'll make my own little mm -hmm. song, you know, a little yeah. arrangement of it. And people really like it. I was doing, uh, Oh, what's that? Uh, well, oh, gosh, the band uh, uh, Soundgarden, who the lead singer was Chris Soundgarden. Cornell. Yeah, yeah. I was uh, I was doing uh, what? Well, actually, it might have been a Soundgarden song, uh, and I can't even think of the name. I'm so stupid. I can't. Like Black Hole that. Sun or something. Yes, that was it. Black Hole Sun. And and uh, people go, man, that was Black Hole Sun. I go, yeah. And it was like, you know, because I just did this like nice little kind of crazy arrangement of it. But I love doing stuff like that because it enables me to please that audience and I love it because I like that music. But, you know, you're, I'm one guy sitting up there playing piano or whatever, you know, so it's kind of yeah, but, hard to make it work, you know. But that's cool. Though. I mean, it works, though. That's the thing is that people... You know, yeah. it's weird how that works, though, because, you know, I've toured around with my band doing all kinds of different versions of it. And a lot of the time it's a full band, you know, a trio or whatever I have going on at the time. But sometimes I've done, you know, uh, toured with like playing backup tracks on an iPod and stuff. And it's it's funny to me how different. Some people feel really strongly that like, man, no, nah, you don't need, the band is bad. You need to use the iPod. You know what I mean? And I'm like, what? You know, like, but, but some people feel really, they like, they're like, it's weird. It's something different. So it's not yeah. just a, a band, you know, but for me, it's more fun to play with other people. So I prefer the band, but you know, you do what you do and it's good. Yeah. That is funny, isn't it? That's kind of like a thing that's going on right now. I, uh, a year, well, before this COVID stuff hit, I was uh, this guy, he's a young guy. He's probably in his 30s, uh, early 30s. He come in, he said, uh, he had just been to California. He said, man, you know what's happening out there is you're getting all this like cheesy instrumentals 
of of songs, but they're you know, but they're like doing like little beatboxes with some, but the people are loving it. It's like it's so this whole thing is jerked around like used to, you know, and I'm still like that. I'd rather play with musicians, but it's the whole thing about backing tracks and MIDI and all that, which used to be so taboo, like, oh, you don't want to do that's not real. You're not a real musician. Now it's coming around where everybody's like, yeah, man, I'm digging that because they see so much of it, I guess, on uh, TV or radio or whatever. You know, they they don't know what it is. They just like it. They just like the way it sounds. You know? so. It's a time of change. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, hey, you know what? You got to you gotta just, you know, go with the flow. I remember uh, Tom Dowd, the guy that uh, he produced the Keep On Smiling album, you know, and he he like, you know, he started with Atlantic Records way back in the day. He produced John Coltrane. He started producing all these people. You know, it's okay to talk about that? Tom, I'm just, it's it's flabbergasting to know that you worked with this guy. Like, it's it's amazing. It's so cool, well, man. Know, he's got a, he's got a, like a little, uh, he's got a little uh, video out. Uh, he didn't put it out. They, they did it. He died about a few years back. But he did uh, our Keep On Smiling album, you know. And so he picked the hit off of it. We didn't think Keep On Smiling was a hit. We didn't know nothing about it. We just did the songs. And he was like this beat Nick guy. He would come in and he'd have like a, a sweater with, you know, with a, what do you call it? I can't even know. You know Turtleneck. Like, yeah, a turtleneck sweater, you know. And he had a little goatee. And he called everybody baby and chicky, you know, and all this stuff. <laughs> but he had a great way of working with you to actually – get the best out of you without telling you what to do. And so uh, he was telling us one time that he actually did Cream. He did uh, their first record, Disraeli Years. And when they come to Sunshine of Your Love, Ginger Baker couldn't figure out how to, what to do on it because he just, they would dan, 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 dan. And Ginger Baker was trying to get a beat. Now he was really good about, you know, off beats and all that stuff. And Tom Dowd went out there and said, look, just play an Indian beat on it. And he goes, what? An Indian beat? He said, you know, boom, 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 boom. And so he said, okay. So now, boom, 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 boom. And it worked. It was like, it was like, you know, and so looking back, you know, it was like 17 or 18, I guess, when that come out. I was going like, dang, now what is that? And now I'm kind of meeting this guy and working with him, you know, and he's like, he's really good. Uh, he got the best out of you without telling you what to do. He would just make suggestions. He'd leave it up to you. You know, he was real free, you know. But the reason I was even talking about this is because he had a, he would keep the old school ways, but he would, his thoughts would go into, you know, modern stuff so his 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 technology would encompass this huge way of doing things with technology and the old school but he wouldn't favor one or the other he would just do whatever you know he would like mesh them together mm -hmm. that was so cool for somebody his age and now i'm about his age you know and i'm thinking well that's you know you take a little of everything from everything you've learned whether it's old school or new school or whatever, and you just try to come up with something that's creative. It's great, man. That's an amazing story. That's really cool to hear that about the, uh, especially yeah. about the uh, Disraeli gears. I figured you'd like that since you're a drummer. Oh yeah, totally, man. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. I, you know, I've never, I've never really had the fortune, uh, the good fortune to work with uh, many producers like, you know, that, accomplished producers uh so it's uh hearing stories me like that neither. Is... <clears throat> me neither he was actually he was actually the one that we enjoyed the, the most the other one was eddie offered and he had you know eddie offered did uh yes and some people like that mm -hmm. but he when he come over to america all he wanted to do was party and pick up girls and he didn't even know what money was i'd like i'd go out to eat with him or something he got so I, he said, what's this one? And it's like a bra. I said, that's a penny. 
said, what's this one? This is bigger one. I said, that's a quarter. You know, he was like totally, <laughs> totally. <laughs> he didn't know what money was or nothing here, you know, but all, but he loved it here and he went crazy. So it really, I didn't, we didn't get much work out of him because he was too busy partying all the time. I mean, you know? <laughs> it was like, you know, it's funny. That's amazing, man. That's a, uh, I, there's, um, one story you told me a long time ago about when Wet Willie played um, at Willie Nelson's oh, picnic. Oh, yeah. Yeah, how we got in. Yeah, tell, tell that story if you don't, if, if it's a... Uh... No, no, I'll tell you, we were, uh, we were on tour with uh, CZ Top, and at this point in our careers, we had a bus, right? Before, we were driving around station wagons in any way we could get somewhere, you know? But by this time, we had, you know, enough popularity, we had a bus. And so we, uh, we said, hey, man, we got a couple of days off. Let's go down. Willie Nelson's having his picnic in Austin. Let's go down there and see if we can get in, you know. So, all right. so we, we drive to, to Austin, and uh, we get there, and we think, how are we going to get in, you know? We don't, I don't know anybody. Do you know any promoters? No, I don't know anybody. So we, we'll just drive around, you know. So the bus driver drove around. Uh, it, and it was at a, it was at a racetrack, I believe. It was something like that, you know. Um, and it had, you know, back gate, a big back gate. So we we went around. We saw where there was a back gate. Looked like, you know, they had some arrows point to it. So we pulled in there, and the guy just opens the gates. He just opens the gates. <laughs> and we pull, and we pull our bus in, and we're pulling our bus in. And everybody's like waving at us, like, hey, hey. And we're like, wow, they know who we are. This is great. You know, hey. And so we're, you know, and so we, we see where the other buses are. So we pull up, you know, where these other buses are. And uh, so we're afraid to get out now because we're like, oh, man, we're, we're going to get busted. As soon as we get out of there, they, you know. So anyway, about, I don't know, uh, 10 minutes go by. We're still freaking out that we got in. And a knock on the door on the side of the bus, boom, boom, you know. And so the bus driver, he he opens the bus, you know, the doors, and Willie Nelson walks in. And oh. Willie Nelson comes in, and he says, well, I just wanted to see what my bus looked like. And we're like, <laughs> what is he talking about, you know? And we're freaking out because Willie Nelson's standing there. And so <laughs> and the bus driver starts laughing. He says, come here, I, I know what's going on. So we all get out of the bus and go around the front and up top of the bus where – uh, you know, you had destinations like uh, Dallas yeah. or this or whatever. He didn't have room for Wet Willie, so he just put Willie up there. <laughs> they, <laughs> they thought Wet was Willie's bus, and that's why everybody was waving. It's, it's Willie. You know, he's coming in, you know. So that's how we got in. But he thought it was funny. He thought it was funny that we played the system and won, you know. We didn't know nothing about it, you know. So he said, "Come on, y'all, come on in." And, you know, he said, "I remember rolled a big joint up. We smoked it with him, and, and then uh, got out of the bus, you know, and, and uh, went up watched the Pointer Sisters. Actually, they were playing whenever we uh, when we got out. So we had a good time. Wow, you know? <laughs> what a story, man! <laughs> that is incredible. I don't remember yeah, yeah, well, all of those details. Uh, I think. Um, I think I didn't get all those details back in the day when I heard that story from you, but that's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's all kind of crap like that. You know, it's funny. When you look back on your life and you go, all the stuff I did, I, I wish I'd taken pictures. I could have, I could have been a millionaire just on all the pictures, you know, <laughs> meeting all these people and stuff, you know, I, if I just had the sense that I had a camera and go, Hey, Alice, can I just, Alice Cooper, can I just like take a picture with you? Yeah. Okay. You know, you know it's like, yeah. you know, all these pictures have been great. They're like you told me, you know, speaking of uh, smoking joints, I heard you telling me one time, maybe, uh, I don't remember if, it, if I'm telling it correctly, but I think you said uh, you, you were somewhere and Mark Farner was there, Grand Funk was there, and you went oh, yeah, to try to smoke yeah. a joint with him or something? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, I bet, yeah we, were, we were near, uh, they lived in uh, Flint, Michigan. Yeah. And we were up there playing this big club. And he was he was actually kind of in love with Donna Hall, one of our, you know, yeah, the lead, uh, one of the girl singers in the band, Jimmy Hall, Jack Hall's sister. Mm -hmm. So he would come anywhere if she was around, you know. So anyway, but he knew I liked smoke pot, you know, because we'd smoked pot before. I, I met him, 
you know, like that. And and so anyway, uh, so <laughs> he come up there and he goes, hey, hey, John, I got some really good weed I got from uh, Hawaii. It's like this uh, Maui Wowie or something, you know, it's grown in the pineapple fields, you know, and all this stuff. I said, yeah, yeah. So we're, we go up to this room upstairs where the, like, it's like a attic or something below where the band was playing. The band was playing in this big old house, you know, it was like a, one of those cool houses that, you know, just kind of a cool place, but it had a big room up top. So anyway, we go up there and I got so stoned. Well, we went back down stairs and I didn't even know I have at that time I had like five keyboards you know I was Rick Wakeman I had like a keyboard here and a keyboard here yeah and one behind me and I, dude I didn't even know what keyboard to play any of these parts I was just like <laughs> and, and the band was looking at me like what is wrong with him and I was like I was like screwing parts up totally I, you know I'd play a string line I'd play some organ bar or something you know and it was like oh my god i, I almost killed him because i could you know <laughs> wow yeah that's good crazy. old mark farner <laughs> yeah yeah mark farner got me stoned you know so much you know he just uh, he just he came actually came to mobile not too long ago uh for donna hall's wedding she had she got remarried and he came nobody knows about this nobody knows he came to mobile to a little uh it was a place called sticks uh five rivers five rivers on the causeway and he come there because i was there because the don was getting married you know and he come there and showed up uh and and actually jammed with the band that i was playing in and and we did uh locomotion and a couple of songs he was just like hanging out with us and nobody nobody knew about it he just come in wow. yeah. yeah this has been about oh this has been at least 15 years ago okay yes something like that wow is mark farner yeah. just showing up huh <laughs> yeah well he, you know he i think he stayed in touch with donna you know he they lived together for a while up in okay. Flint. She, lived, she lived up there for about a year or so okay uh, Flint, so. i had no idea this is a I'm learning a lot, John. We're all learning yeah, a lot. Aren't well, we? I don't know how much we can publish, but you know, I mean, we, you know, we can just talk. You know, it's crazy. Um, what are like the what's like one of the like coolest collaborations you've done with, or like coolest people you've worked with, as far as other musicians go, like outside of like a band you you were ex you were in, like okay. Uh... Uh, I think, let me think about this for a second, because uh, the coolest thing uh, I think that I was in was I was, I didn't even play keyboards in it, I played bass. And it was, uh, and it was a band that at the time, uh, they weren't really known that much, but uh, the guys ended up, one of them started playing uh, with uh, Zach Brown, some now, you know, and uh, and uh, one of them used to play with Bobby uh, Womack, which oh. was, the, uh, you know, he wow. was like a black songwriter, guitar player, or singer, and I had some pretty cool songs out. But this band, man, these guitar players were way ahead. Like we did this, we did this uh, demo in Capricorn Records, and uh, it sounded like Journey way before Journey. Yeah, and I was like, you know, that to me that was so cool because uh, it just was way ahead of its time. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, and the only reason we couldn't ever get anything going on. It's because the band was crazy. I mean, they were like crazy, like Carrie Gunn crazy and on all this stuff. And they were so good, man. I mean, the guitar players were just, I've never played with any guitar players, either one of them like it. One of them's name's Donald Dunleavy and the other guy's name is, uh, oh gosh. He was the one that played with Bobby Womack, uh, the other guy. Uh, Wow. Uh, it's coming to me, but I can't think of it right now. Uh, but yeah, man, he was, it was just, that was the coolest thing because the music was so ahead of us. I mean, it was just like way out there crazy. 
but I've still got some of the stuff. I have to I have to download some of it and send it to you just so you can check it out. I wish somebody would do some of these songs. We had some really cool songs. We had one about uh, like acid rain way before this even was like you know it's just yeah. this weird. My son he's got some of this stuff and he's like man he's in a little band and they want to. I said, yeah, well, y'all should cover some of it, you know. But uh, that was probably the coolest thing. I mean, as far as working with big name people or whatever, uh, you know, uh, on collaborating on writing or whatever like that, that's probably, I don't know. I've, I've just always wrote with Whit Willie pretty yeah, much. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what was the name of the that band you were just talking about? Oh, uh, Avera. Avera. Okay. It was in, uh, I can't even spell it. I can't think of how to say it. It was uh, Avera or Vera. It was uh, somebody. I don't know how that was. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you what. I'll find all that out and I'll, I'll send you yeah, some. Yeah, that's all good. You'll, 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 you'll dig it. I mean, you'll either think it's like, wow, this is great, or it's like. But we would come play some places and people's just jaws would drop. Like, yeah. Uh, awesome. That's cool, yeah. man. I, I, <laughs> that's uh, kind of how I. Think about my well, old band. Playing keyboards, so I was just playing bass. Yeah, you know? yeah, bass. Yeah, that's right. You said you weren't even playing keyboards. Yeah, that's cool, I didn't man. Play keyboards on any of it. You know. Um, just, I'm excited about the song that uh, you played keyboards on for uh, the new Abstract oh, Artemis song. Man. I hope I, I hope you you know I hope that's what you wanted because I would really uh, you know I was uh, you know I, I was listening to it. I played it for Shanna. You know, and she's like, "That's art." I said, "Yeah, man, that's good." And we were like, you know, uh, I was just playing, and I, I listened to it, and I thought, that sounds good. And I really like your voice. I really, I thought, you know, he's got this unusual voice. It sounds almost like, uh, to me, on some things, it's almost like uh, Billy Gibbons, kind of, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, I've had that before. I know. It's just, it's just, see, but, but the, the uh, audience, the, the, People that would, you know, your audience, probably a lot of them don't even know who Billy Gibbons is. I mean, they might, but I doubt. well, you know, you'd be surprised. I, I think uh, my audience is. I think there, are, there are people out there that do know, but there are certainly. I want there to be younger people in my, you know, in my audience. Of course, that's yeah. Uh, so I'm sure, a lot of them do not know, uh, but they will if they know about yeah. me. They will learn about <laughs> Billy Gibbons. Well, well, you know what I like about your stuff that I've heard so far is you've got uh, you've got a very good you've got your niche. You know exactly what you're going for, and that's you know that's one thing about uh, about Wet Willie that I always you know I wish that we you know what you if you can't or if you just diverse and we were diverse, you have to continue. But if you're if you're if you get your niche like. You know the way you do things, and I like. See, I like it. I was listening to. The, I was listening to the Methuselah's rhyme mm -hmm. the other day, and I thought, yeah, man, I know where he's coming from. See, I, I'm I'm from that vein too, so like yeah. I I can dig on it, you know. And I was like, yeah, man, uh, I can hear it. I know exactly what you're going for. It. I like it, you know. So I'm hoping that uh, that you'll, you know, that'll be a good building you gotta you just gotta keep pumping the stuff out <laughs> yeah of course man and i think it's great what you did on the song it's perfect i can't wait to release it i'm just gonna it'll be it'll be sooner than later but uh i will be releasing right, the new song. Hey, you know what you do what you do you know yeah and um uh man how was it being uh how was mobile in the 70s like the music scene or like playing around oh, you know? there wasn't a big music scene you know uh what we uh did in the 70s uh there was there was you know i mean it was the same thing with like the guys everybody was growing long hair when i went when i moved to georgia and then moved back all the rednecks had long hair you know when i moved back you know, and everybody's mm -hmm. like, and I was like, yeah, see, I told you, you dummies, you know, they, but they were, they were kidding me and messing with me, you know, because of all that stuff, being a hippie or whatever, and I yeah. come back, they're all hippies, you know, yeah. uh, so it's like, 
said, well, okay, so y'all caught up. But there was never <laughs> a really, there was never a really uh, scene that much in Mobile. It was really more over in Pensacola and Biloxi that there yep. was more of a music scene. And I guess because of the drinking age, at least the drinking age in Biloxi was 18. That's right. You know, and, and it was 21 here. So everybody go over there. But uh, yeah, we, uh, you know, we would, uh, there was nothing happening. So what we did was, I said, okay, there's no real place for us. So we'll go, we went to a park. We went to a municipal park that you can mm -hmm. go to. And we'd go set up our stuff and nobody tell us we could. we just go and find a place that has cement, you know, and a plug in. And we go set up. Well, 50 of our friends would show up. Next week, 100 show up. You know, and it's about six months time, we had 2,000 people out there when having these shows, right? And so the city found out about it and kicked us out of there. And so we had to go to Brooklyn Field Air Force. Yeah. Yeah. And so we did that, and all those people would show up. But by that time, it was getting, like, really crazy. And one of the guys that was here that used to uh, – I'm not going to say his name because I actually he went to prison for this. He got high on acid and went and tried to steal a plane out of the off the runway of Brickley Air Force Base and uh, and got put in prison. He tried to take it off. I mean, hey, I don't know if he knew how to fly or not, but he got in there <laughs> somehow, cranked it up, and this was just down the runway in this like this uh, passenger. Uh, Air Force plane, you know, and they stopped him before he got it off the ground. <clears throat> so that kind of, you know, that cut that off. Okay, them hippies are crazy. They're stealing stuff. You know, they're going and doing this. So, mm -hmm. uh, so that and that was about, you know, by that time we had had enough, and uh, we got the offer to go up to Macon, and that's what we did. We just went up there, you know. So that wow. kind of was out of here, you know. John, okay. Anthony, thank you so much for for being here tonight, calling in, and uh, you know, My I pleasure. just I'm so happy. Those were some great stories, and uh, well, I hope you don't have to add, add, exit out of them too much. You know, man, I hope they weren't too X-rated or anything. You know, oh, we're not worried about X-rated that uh, much on the yeah, show. Yeah. I don't have a very young listening audience, so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, thank you so much, John. All right, man. I appreciate it, Art. Right.